OKRs, or objectives and key results, is a framework teams use to set goals for themselves and track their progression towards these goals. Think of an objective as the destination you want to reach, whereas key results are outcomes you need to achieve to reach your destination. Teams will set OKRs for a specific time period, usually a quarter or a year. Whether or not you're familiar in the OKR framework, you probably know that setting measurable goals for your team can be a difficult process. Notion's a versatile tool that can help you carry out all the planning and tracking of these OKRs. When goals are all in one place, this creates transparency across your entire team and your entire company. This two-part video will show you how to build a system that tracks OKRs in Notion. First, we'll build an OKR database from scratch. Second, we'll add different database views to your table and show how you can use them to look at your data in several ways. If you use another type of goal-setting framework for your team, don't fret. You can apply this setup to any goals where you want to track their progress. In your team's homepage, let's add a table database that we will use specifically for OKRs. To add a new one to your page, hit the forward slash key, type page, and press enter. Then select table from the database section. Give your new table a name and add an icon and cover image to it if you wish. Here's a blank canvas where we can add all the information we want. First, let's use this description section here to help orient any of your teammates who look at this page. Remember that objectives are big goals your company wishes to achieve by the end of a certain time period, like the end of a quarter or the end of the year. We'll add these objectives into the table later in the video, but this is just to have them handy in the meantime. Notion databases allow you to store data entries. Each entry is its own page that holds other content. In the case of this table database, the first column to appear by default is where you can add your table entries. We'll use this column to store our key results. Our first company objective is build a workplace our employees love. So a key result for this could be get an employee engagement score of 80%. Type your key result in the table cell. Now let's type in another key result for the first objective in the cell below. Note that these should be as quantifiable as possible. Our second company objective is increase product performance. Let's add the corresponding key results in the table. Now that our four database entries are stored, we can add further information about each of them. Notice that every key result is in fact a page, which you can fill with all the content you want, like tasks you'll do to accomplish that objective or meeting notes between teams related to it. At the top of every page entry, you'll find what we call properties. Simply put, properties are pieces of information about each database entry. They can come in the form of text, numbers, dates, but also people. To add a new property to your database, you can click on add a property here, or in the case of a table database, just click on the plus sign that appears at the top of the empty column to the right. The next step is to add properties to our database. Before we do so, Let's have a look at the final database. As you will see later, properties appear as columns in your table. This table has 10 additional columns, hence 10 properties. We'll start by adding three single select properties that will let us capture the objective the key result supports, the team responsible for executing it, and the quarter in which we want to accomplish the key result. Let's do that in our table. Click on the plus sign, name your new property objective, hover your cursor under property type, and pick the select property. A new column called objective is now created. Repeat the same steps for the two remaining properties. This time, call them team and quarter. You can click on name in the first column and rename it to key result. This tax column is here by default, so feel free to delete it by clicking on its name, then delete and delete again. Now that your columns are created, you can fill them out with information. Remember that this key result, let's just call it KR, is associated to the first objective which we wrote above. Now we can cut and paste the objective in this table cell and hit create. This automatically creates a tag. You can adjust the width of the column by clicking on its edges and dragging. For this other key result, the objective is the same. All you have to do is click inside the table cell and select the tag. Now let's cut the second OKR, paste it next to its corresponding key result, and click on Create. 
another tag is created. For the last key result, click on the table cell and select the second OKR. Now use this column to specify the team that is tackling every key result. Instead of cutting and pasting, type the name of the team and select Create. Once your tags are created, just select them from the list to use them again. The same thing applies for this quarter property. Should you wish to change the color of your tags, simply click inside a table cell, then click on the three-dot icon next to the tag and pick your new color from the dropdown. Now, off to our next batch of properties. You'll want to add three number properties. The first is where you're starting with the goal. The last is where you'll end when the goal is completed. The middle number is how you'll track your progress. Additionally, we'll insert a formula property that calculates the percentage you've completed. Click on the plus sign, name your new property. Here, we'll call it initial value. Hover the cursor under property type and select the property you need from the dropdown. This time, let's select number. Next, we'll add two more number properties, which we'll name current value and target value. Here they are. Now we can add numbers in the number columns. For this KR, let's say your initial employee engagement score is 66%. This translates as 0.66 as a number. Equally, if your employee engagement score is currently at 73%, punch in 0.73 and 0.8 as your target value. Let's add the numbers for the three remaining KRs. The team is aiming for a 4.5 out of 5 Glassdoor rating, while our initial value at the beginning of the quarter was 3.7, and our rating is currently at 3.9. As for QA hiring, the quarter started with zero new QA hires, and now the team has hired two, while the objective is to hire five. Finally, at the beginning of last quarter, the load page duration was 2.5 seconds, but the team was able to meet their goal of bringing it down to two seconds or lower. Since this key result has already been achieved, the current value is the same as the target value. With these numbers in mind, it's possible to calculate the percentage of the key result that has been completed. To do this, add a formula property to your table, which you can call progress. Click inside any column cell to set up your formula. You'll want to divide the difference between the current value and the initial value by the difference between the target value and the initial value. Once your formula is complete, click Done. To display your result as a percentage, hover your cursor over 1, 2, 3 at the top left of the table cell and select Percent from the dropdown. Great! Now you can easily see the team's progress for each key result. Finally, there are three more properties to add. A person property to specify the lead person for each key result, a date property to designate a time frame, and a last edited property to capture the last time a team member edited the key result. Again, click on the plus sign. We'll name this property lead and select person from the dropdown. Call the next one time frame and select date. Find the last property by scrolling down to the advanced properties section and pick last edited time. You can call this column last modified. This will capture the exact time every entry was last modified. All that's left to do is add a lead and time frame for every key result. Person properties will let you select a workspace member from a list. If you don't find them right away, look their name up in the search bar. As for date properties, a calendar will pop up. Pick a start date, toggle on end date, and select an end date for every key result. Let's add a database description. Your database is now complete. For the second part of the video, we will add database views to the table. Briefly put, we will set up different ways of looking at our data while leaving the data itself untouched. You'll see what we mean in just a second. Click on Add a View at the top left of the table. In addition to the table we built, we can choose to display our data in another table, a board, timeline, calendar, a simple list, or a gallery. 
Say you'd like to have a table that only displays OKRs for the engineering team. Type in your view name, select Table, then Create. This additional table is currently identical to the one you created. In order to only see engineering OKRs and mask the rest, we'll need to add a filter. Click on Filter, then Add a Filter, add a filter again, and now select from every dropdown so that it says, Team is Engineering. Voila! Thanks to this filter, people who consult this view can be sure to see engineering OKRs only. Repeating the same steps, let's create another table view that only displays OKRs for the people team. As you can see, you can apply a filter based on any one of your table's properties. For example, what if you wanted every team lead to have a view where they can see all the key results they're overseeing? You can easily do that by adding another view and applying this filter. Lead contains me. In this case, me is dynamic and will change for whatever team member is looking at the view. Let's continue with two more filtered views, each displaying key results for a different quarter. This time, the filters will look like this. The last view to add is a timeline view. This allows you to see all your key results displayed chronologically and gain a full understanding of the work at hand. You can even see your KRs laid out according to different time units, hours, days, weeks, years, or quarters. For more information on timeline views, have a look at this video. We now have seven different views of the same database. Easily switch between these views by clicking on the view menu and selecting the one you wish to see. The table we built together sits here at the top. Click on the three dots next to it and rename it to All. This is your default unfiltered database view. As you can see, you can choose to view and process your data in endless ways. To learn more about database views, you can watch this video. This is our final look for our database. One last thing before we go. Wouldn't it be useful to have the same database appear at the top of every team page? This would allow every team to keep their OKRs top of mind. To achieve this, go to a team page, place your cursor at the top and hit the forward slash key. Type the word linked and then select create linked database. Now you will have to search for the name of the database you want to link to. Once it shows up, select it. Here's your OKR database again, linked to this page. Notice that all you have here is your default table database, stripped of all the views we created previously. You can add all the views and filters you want here without having them affect the views and filters in the original database. However, edits you make to the actual content of a linked database will be reflected in the original. This makes it easy for your team to work on their goals in their team page, but make sure those updates are reflected transparently across teams. Let's add a filter then. When databases are just a component of a page, or inline as we call it, you can access their menu by clicking on the three dot menu at the top right. Select filter and add a filter so that the only KRs displayed are the ones for the engineering team. Click on add a filter again and specify that you want to see KRs from the second quarter only. To help your team focus, you can choose to hide some properties. Click on the three dot menu again select Properties, and untoggle all the properties you wish to hide. Note that this action does not delete the properties, but simply clarifies the table for your team members. You can click directly on the key result page to view all of its properties, including the ones you have chosen to hide in your table. Here's your filtered OKR table. You can do the same for every other team. Finally, click here to navigate to your original database. And we're done! We have a fully customized database to store our OKRs and keep track of their progress. By now, you should know how to create your own OKR database and customize it down to every detail with the properties, views, and filters you need. You also learned how to link this database in another page and apply different filters there. All of this allows your teammates to stay in the loop, no matter where or when they're connecting from. With this setup, you can be sure that everyone is, quite literally, on the same page. Good luck setting those OKRs. Okay